This is a laptop running Unity and Steam VR. This is an HTC Vive tracker. Well, it's not a tracker, it's a uh, wand controller. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi connected to an Arduino connected to a Mi Arm robot arm. This is a piece of foam rubber. Just ignore that for the moment. And this is the cube. <laughs> You're probably wondering what is the meaning of all of this, and the answer is we're going to be controlling this using this. And the way that we're going to do that is by finding objects in the VR scene, uh, of which there are several, there are a couple of cubes, and we're going to be hitting the cubes with the controller in real life, and noticing that the LED display seems to light up uh, differently depending on which cube we hit. And we might also notice that by pressing down on the trigger, the claw closes and opens. And what the cube does is it's basically the tracking space for the controller. So when we get the controller in here and start moving at about the z-axis, uh, the robot arm should start moving, which it did. Just zoom in on that real quick. Uh, So by moving the controller uh, about the space, we get to move the arm about the space. Now the reason for this, that um, we have uh, the controller and the cube and all sorts of that, is because remote cars such as these are notoriously difficult to control for people who have not trained these dark cards. However, with uh, the controller hanging in the air, we can just kind of get the robot arm to move in a way that doesn't actually make any sense, but it just demonstrates uh, what the cube is for. And in fact, if you're careful when maneuvering this, you can get it to, let's say, grab that block of uh, foam rubber, down a bit, forward a bit, missed. There we go. Now let's just carry it over to this side. And let's try it one more time. Nope. Nope. There we go. Now, if the robot arm design was uh, more sophisticated, uh, you could uh, get it to respond to various rotations in space, uh, which this does not, because if you rotate the controller, it just moves about. Uh, but if you had a more sophisticated design of the arm, you could do something like this. And another thing you could do uh, is not make it uh, stutter like this. Like, when I'm not moving the controller, it's still shaking about quite violently. Uh, and the reason for that is that I'm using the Raspberry Pi for the server control. Uh, and when you do that, you run into a risk with uh, the Linux kernel running a lot of things at once and not uh, having your program have enough time for the actual server control. Uh, if you want more explanation, you can pull down the description below. Now, this project is by no means finished. Uh, there are certain features uh, in the program that are missing that you'd expect from any sort of project like this. Most notably is the inverse kinematics, because if you notice that when I move the arm about the z-axis, it moves not in a straight line as my arm is, but in a, like some sort of arc. Uh, and the arc is determined by the fact that the base is moving in a circle. Uh, so. Uh, you would expect the arm to be moving in a straight line like this, but it's not. Uh, and this is a feature that uh, you would really want to see before this uh, gets released. But overall, I'm quite happy with how the project turned out, considering that I had just 20 days to build all of this from scratch. Uh, and uh, today it is more or less the deadline. Uh, so, yeah, I'm generally pretty happy with how the project turned out, and I hope that the people that uh, I built for, uh, you guys know who you are, uh, are going to be happy with it too. So, let's just 
Let me get this over here real quick. Thanks for watching.